It's time to go inside Florida State football. This is the Jimbo Fisher Show. The Jimbo Fisher Show is brought to you by the Florida Lottery, proud sponsor of FSU Athletics. The Florida Department of Transportation, drive sober or get pulled over. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Camping World and Good Sam, your one-stop shop for everything RV. Coca-Cola Zero, real Coke taste and zero calories. The Gem Collection, finest quality jewelry, extraordinary service, and the best possible prices. SunTrust, the official bank of the Florida State Seminoles. Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe. Hello and welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Block along with Coach Fisher. And Coach, congratulations. Uh, third straight week, uh, a convincing win, this time 54-6 to six over a, a team, obviously, that you had a decided advantage going in. But nevertheless, came out, competed, and got a yes. lopsided victory, 54-6. to six. You did, and I, I say this, but Thune had a good ball club, and I said that going in. They're very well coached, play very hard, very physical. And, uh, but we did the things we had to do, made a couple plays on defense, we made a big interception early in the game, got a safety early in the game. Uh, and offensively did the things we had to do when we got down and had one turnover in the red zone. But, you know, for the most part, did the things we had to do and, and uh, won the football game. I know with you uh, being an offensive-minded guy as, as a head coach, that would be frustrating that first quarter. I mean, they eat the clock. <laughs> I mean, you look up, and granted, you got to pick six, but they had the ball about the first 10, 11 minutes of the game. They really did. Um, they did. They nickel and dimed it. Uh, we got in discipline on third down there and, and got an offsides one time, and they, they got a – just kept being patient in the calls and kept maneuvering, moving the ball down the field. And then, of course, when you get the pick six, then they get it back again. Right. You know what I mean? And it took a while, and then we had a good opening drive and got a field goal on that. But then we got in the momentum of the game in the second quarter and played very well. But uh, had one turn again, had to turn over, had to fumble in the red zone, which is very uncharacteristic. Had a couple of critical drops, which were very uncharacteristic, of guys that have been great players. Yeah, that's the only uh, miss in the red zone so far this year, that uh, turnover deep. Florida State does uh, come away with a convincing victory, though. We'll look at the first half highlights when we come back right after this. So stay with us. We're just getting started here on the team. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Second straight week, Florida State's at home. You get Bethune Cookman, and you also, at least as uh, kickoff approach look like you're gonna to have to deal with the elements potentially yes. some uh, wet footballs out there and uh, in, I'm interested coach how much have you actually practiced in the rain uh, you know because you have to be prepared for we it. we did it two or three times doing camp and like I say lightning runs us inside but rain we'll go outside but we have to handle wet balls and then we do wet ball drills every Tuesday and sometimes on Wednesday or Thursday if we know the game's coming we snap them handle them with the backs throw and catch them we work on that and that because that's part of the element you have to deal with and for the most part I thought we handled the ball pretty well as it turned out, the weather was really not that significant. It drizzled a little bit early on in uh, the deluge before the game, but it was Military Appreciation Day and uh, a good crowd, and uh, uh, Bethune Cookman got the ball to start things. They really did. We got a nice, uh, nice hit here by Reggie North. Well, I mean, nice physical tackle inside the 20 yard line. Good job by our kickoff team setting the tone here. And then it, it was a discipline. First play, we get a nice tip right here by now. I thought they had a good game. Their lineman got it, and we rallied to the ball. And then. Uh, here, this is critical. They had third down. When they got the back in the three spot, we meant the eye on third down. They were almost 100% draw. And we ran up the field, and we didn't need to do it. We need to press the pocket, and that's what created the scene. Discipline give up that as much as any scheme. That was discipline from our part. Nice play there by Demarcus Walker. Uh, you see uh, Keelan Smith there on a the blitz. Joiner jumped off sides on a third and five on a blitz, and unfortunately they, they then spun out, and they got he's got to work the upfield shoulder, not the downfield shoulder. They stepped up and scrambled here. We missed a twist up inside. Uh, Lyman got out was Lane Tyler Hunter there making a play and running them out of bounds. And, uh, they were moving the ball well. Again, missed tackles in space. Had a sack there by Dan Hicks. And Terrence Smith come up really. T Terrence ended up having a heck of a ball game. They had about 12 tackles in the game. Had a tackle for loss, a sack. Did a really nice job in the game. Here on third down, you see we had a spy in there. Terrence, I mean, uh, Matthew Thomas was spying him. And then old Telvin reached back and made that play. And then I'm going to tell you what, now Telvin showed some wheels there. Him and, and Matthew got out in front and blocked for him. And, Telvin went to the house with the play and did a great job. Great play by a big time senior. And after they ate half the first quarter, which right. was what they were trying to do and lengthen the game, shorten the game, excuse me, and then you go score like that on defense, that was critical. And a big play by Telvin Smith, who just having an outstanding year for us. Like you said, the downside of a pick six is they get the ball right back. Exactly right. Now here, they're, they're running some draws. We lost the edge. We lost the edge a couple times. <clears throat> just And then not from 
not being there, wanting to stick our nose inside and make the play and stay disciplined outside. Great catch on third down by them. Good coverage by Jalen Ramsey. Terrence Brooks, who had a good, solid game, I thought. Uh, there's Walker, nice hit. I can't see who made that hit right there on the quarterback. Timmy, now we missed tackle. Timmy Jernigan missed one right there. And uh, Brooksy, we had to get a guy on the ground before the third down. They get it picked up. We just didn't tackle well at times and, and missed some tackles. Delvin, of course, Dan Hicks kept good contain there, forced the quarterback out. Now they're getting the drive, getting the pressure here. There's Matthew Thomas, missed the quarterback. But I tell you what, Matthew ended up having a really good game. Had a sack later for loss. Now, we stripped it by, by uh, Jalen Ramsey, and Matthew get, helped him get back on it, and we stopped him on third down. And here we go offensive. First play, got a nice stretch play, get the ball outside. Great blocking, great run. We got Kelvin Benjamin, uh, Nick O'Leary, left tackle Cam Irving, Josue Matias, Brian Stork. Nice job, nice cut there by Trey Jackson. Nice route out here by KB. Good job protecting the ball, and we got momentum going. We got the ball going down the field, and uh, we were backed up. Okay, I mean, there's uh, Jameis making a nice throw to Kenny Shaw. Had another outstanding game. Uh, Kenny's playing extremely well for us right now, in my opinion. And uh, no, there's Roberto. Nice 45-yard field goal in wet conditions. Heavy ball gets it down the middle. Uh, very big kick gets us up two scores. And for the most part, his kickoffs were good almost the whole day. And then they misplayed the ball. Now you're starting to change field because you're up two exactly. scores. Get the ball to two. Now we can pin them back. Great job right here, Terrence Smith making a great play. There's Marcus Legway come in and had a very nice game. Timmy Journey had a good solid ball game for us. Now here's uh, 81 field to punt again. They had that spread and we had to field most of them to get to return them. We had a nice shot. Boy, this is uncharacteristic. What a great player uh, the shot is. And unfortunately, just dropped that touchdown. A great throw by Jameis, but we come right back. Now on third down, gets a nice third down pickup. So if you come right back to him, he makes a nice throw and catch. They brought a weak corner fire. And here's uh, uh, Wilder making a great run on a zone play down inside. We're pounding that football, and then we get a nice zone here, and they get their helmet right on the ball. Daggum, and that's our first turnover in the red zone we've had all year, a time we haven't scored, and unfortunately uh, gave up points. We were moving, ready to get another touchdown there. But again, defense did a tremendous job here. Marcus Legway making a great play, getting the back on the ground. We got to make sure we get them on the ground now, finish them. And they throw a screen, and they, get a, they were holding uh, McAllister right there, so any hold. In the end zone, so that's a chance when you throw out your own end zone, it's a safety, and we got two points out of it. So we get the ball back in good field position. Here we are. We take a shot in the game, going deep, and they, uh, we had a double move, and they grabbed uh, Kelvin. So he ran by and got a holding call. Great route by Kelvin, and we get 15 yards, and we can move it on down. Here we go. We get another throw and, and uh, pass right here. We go to the corner, trying to get KB in a one-on-one. -on -one. Up high, puts it in a good spot, but tough. They had pretty good defense right there. He's going to end up making that play when he'll, he'll get him. We throw it. Now, they get a blitz here. I'd rather see James get rid of this ball in the hot, but. He had Liz makes a great throw and then a tremendous catch right here by KB, but great play by five. Uh, they brought the pressure in the empty set and uh, got to be careful now. But the thing he did do when he was on him, he kept control of the football. Does a great job of keeping poised, getting his eyes back up. And then KB, the scramble rule gets there, we can find him and make a great throw and catch. Now we get a kickoff, short kickoff here. Now we we buzz, we, we lose contain here. We can't let that happen right here. We, we should have had contain. Great job by Matthew Thomas coming over the top. And they get field position. That ain't the way you have to get a 19 nothing lead. You want to give it up. Now, here's again. LaMarcus Joyner's not giving up the edge. Great job by him. Him and Keelan Smith out there in, in, in the secondary play doing a nice job. Uh, we get a nice stretch play again. Again, there's uh, Wilder leading Freeman. Freeman gets up inside about a 10-yard gain. Bobby Hart doing a real nice job. Uh, Trey Jackson. Uh, Nick O'Leary blocked real well. Now, we had a nice little curl route right here. Great to see Christian Green really starting to get in the flow now. Had two nice catches in the ball game on nice curl routes. Then we ran a little uh, edge a stretch play again. A nice five, six yard run there by uh, Devontae. We're getting the edge. They were bunching the middle, bringing pressure. Nice blitz pickup right there by Devontae. And get the ball back to Christian Green. Uh, Jameis found the one on one. And uh, we're starting to move the ball, mix around, run a little screen play, trying to dump this ball off, but they played it. So he just kept it. He just kept the ball. We got a four or five yard gain out of it. And uh, again, Jameis doing a real nice job of just filling the game. Great run by Wilder here. Thought he ran real well in the game as all of our guys did. We ran the ball very well. Zone play down inside. We ran it again. Nice breaking tackle, strong, hard running right there by Wilder, who down that red zone is very good at that. Great day right there. Great block by uh, Nick O'Leary and great block by Chad Abrams. Big time block by Abrams. Another one right there. Abrams is playing great football, folks. I mean, he is doing everything we're asking him to do. Offensive line is doing a really good job up front. We really move guys out there, Matias and Irving and Stork and Bobby Hart and Trey Jackson. There's, there's Giorgio in there. Now we get one tough kickoff here, and we like, we got a good roll. Well, thing, when things go right, they go right. And uh, – Got a good roll, and they lose out of bounds and lose field position. Here they are. we got to sprint out. <clears throat> Great catch by them, but we get him short of the first down. Keelan held on just enough to get the guy on the ground, and they got to punch the ball on fourth down. Run a little trap play up inside. Nice job by uh, Devontae. 
It's a nice 20 yard gain, and we're, we're mixing. We're two minutes for the half. We really want to score here. Great catch, vertical route by Kenny Shaw. Got up vertical, nice read, good throw and catch. Here, Jameis keeps it on the quarterback zone read, and we get the ball outside. He can throw the bubble. He scrambles, picks up eight or nine yards. Now we're hitting on all cylinders, get a little trap play back again up inside on the power play. Great blocking by the front, and uh, then we get the ball. Great short yardage running. There's uh, Jacoby McDaniel in short yardage. We're running right behind him. Sticking that ball up in the end zone. A good touchdown run by DeMonte Freeman. Great job by the guys. Uh, kickoff. Now we're starting to cover this. Good job by Tim. Great hit by Carlos Williams. Well, you talk about coming flying out of nowhere, can run down that field and make plays. Great job by him. Here they are in the zone play right before half. We were trying to call timeouts. Hopefully we get the ball back, try to get a block punt. But they uh, they get out of there. And, oh, could have been a hold call right there. But that's all right. Great job by Terrence Smith. Uh, uh, secondary scrape and getting outside. We get 33 nothing at half and uh, again scored before the end of the half which was very critical and got momentum and then we you know we had the ball coming out so we wanted to score again. Yeah and uh, and as it turned out you did we'll look at those highlights in a little bit. Coach Devontae Freeman right now is leading the ACC in yards per carry back-to-back hundred yard games and uh, and really has gotten off to a good start this year. He really is. I said this he had a tremendous camp. You saw it in camp. He ran well, was fast, very quick, but just the knowledge of our offense, where the cuts were, how the blocks were being set up, then pass protection doing a great job, catching the ball out of the backfield. I mean, I thought he's he's had an outstanding camp from, from since he came in. Yeah, it's paying dividends. Let's look back at the uh, the biggest play of the first half presented by Gem Collection, and it was a gem in terms of uh, making all the highlight shows, but uh, the scramble play where Jameis Winston yeah. – uh, Dodges a defender or two, somehow hangs on and finds uh, Benjamin who makes a terrific catch. Yeah, I mean, you know, great players making great plays. Uh, like I said, they had a blitz. We had the option to throw a hot route or kind of hold on, and then he broke a tackle. He got a little bit lucky, but again, he played hard. He protected the football and came out. Just in the wits to keep his poise and get his eyes back downfield after that and found, made a great uh, throw, and then KB went up and made a tremendous catch. And, and the good thing about the, all the receivers, which opened it up, Nobody stood around. They all got in the scramble rules. They opened up lanes and they ran to different places, which opened up the field. And our guys did a great job of that. Great and coaching by our coaches. And then Freeman uh, actually saved Winston there from taking a shot after yes, he threw he the did. football. He, he got rid of that last defender. So a big comfortable lead for Florida State at the half, 33-0. But uh, second half still to come. And we'll get to those second half highlights in just a little bit. Stay with us here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Buckle your chin straps, it's time for Inside the Helmet, presented by Napleton Infinity. Jameis Winston, or a short freshman, best my Alabama. Jameis Winston, shotgun formation, got an H back to his left wing, and that's O'Leary. He'll run the ball to the left side as Jameis Winston. He gets it inside the 3-2 one. Touchdown, Florida State. Jameis Winston's thrown two and run one in. How about that for a debut by a red shirt freshman quarterback? My first football game, I was playing tight end. I was four years old playing with a seven-year-old, so it was a it was a rough night for me. My pads were to my ankles, like my knee pads was at my ankles, and my thigh pads were at my knees. It was like everything was was too big for me, but it was fun going out there, having fun and enjoying time. And we won, so my dad was my hero, really. Uh, we was real close. And uh, I always liked uh, Will Smith, freshman Sprayler. He was like my other hero. So when I got older and they came out with Hancock, I was like, that's Will Smith for real. I like superhero movies like Batman. I love Batman movies. And uh, actually, I'm into cartoons a little bit. I love Toy Story too. So the Toy Story series, like my favorite movies of all time. My favorite one was uh, Scooby Doo. I like Scooby. I like Scooby, he was so funny, like, I just like when he used to try to talk a little bit, it just was, it was fun. Most people on the team can't even pronounce my name right, so I don't think I really, I don't have a nickname yet, but uh, most people call me either Jameis, Jameson, or J-Boo, like J-Boo is really my nickname. I was always a Yankees fan, but uh, I, always, I liked, I liked. Oakland A's when I was growing up. I mean, the, the same teams that I, I still like today. You can learn so much when you're just watching from a distance and then you have the opportunity to be in the same locker room as this man, because he's, he's such a great person and uh, he just taught me a lot of things. You want to take that football mindset to the baseball field. Uh, that's what I think makes me 
uh, a decent baseball player because I have that same mindset on the baseball field. I never change. Like, you don't have to change when you're playing those two sports. Your mindset can always be the same. No rituals. I just, uh, I just, it's time to get ready. Showtime. Uh, before you go out there to the field, you got to make sure everything's right and uh, it's time to play. Kind of like vision what's going to happen. Like, have a, a dream about how I'm going to put myself out there on the line. Probably Kenny Shaw. Kenny Shaw's a good dancer. Darby and Reggie Northrup, they are, they're some good dancers too, but Kenny Shaw he is the dancer. I can, I can move, but I don't dance, I just move. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Florida State with a 33-0 lead over Bethune-Cookman at the half, Coach. But uh, still another 30 minutes of football to go. So what was your talk to the team uh, at halftime as you got set for the second half? Well, we half? wanted to play 60 minutes. We know how important it was to score at the end of the half, how much to take the momentum back to go out and get a good kickoff return, get the ball down, and, and have a good drive to start the second half and get points and really take control of the football game and, you know, and make sure we leave no, no stone unturned and leave no hope for them. And uh, that was something we did well and, and very proud of the kids for doing that. You uh, defer to the beginning of the game, so you get the ball here. You're doing a good job winning the toss so far. Yeah, we have been. Uh, now, here they get a nice – I'm going to tell you what, now, Kermit Whitfield, you talk about – I really liked him on returns. He had two nice returns in this game and, and really hit it up in there. We get a nice pass play here. Uh, good scramble. Good job by uh, Rashad uh, stepping back out. He had a crossing route, and they cut him off. He went back outside. We found him. And we get a nice stretch. Great run. Great block, a downfield block. KB. Uh, Christian Green, Kenny Shaw all did a great job lead blocking for him right there out in space and uh, eight, Devontae did a great job. Nice dig right inside. Uh, you know, uh, Jameis really sees the middle of the field well. Now we run a little, I got a little corner route and got a little delay route underneath and they doubled, they went with the double guys and, and we found Rashad down to shoot, shoot for a nice throw and catch and uh, big play and got us at you know, four plays and we scored and got the momentum of the game and got up you know, early like we wanted to. Now here they come back, they have an excellent drive here in the second half. Again, we gotta be more physical with our tackling. We, they're breaking tackles, pushing the pile on us a little bit. We have got to be more physical. Nice play by Marcus Allegra. Now Lawrence had a really good game, I thought, uh, in this game. I, our defensive player of the week that this year was actually Chris Casher. Chris did a tremendous job in the game and had a, and a lot of tackles, ten, ten, tackles. ten tackles and a sack. and. One or two sacks right there. He is again making a nice play. And Reggie North have had some nice plays. Jacoby McDaniel, I thought, had a nice game. He's really playing more and more and getting back in the groove of playing. Now, here they make a nice throw. Perfect coverage. Got to go up and try to contest the ball. Nick had great coverage. They just played over the top of him. And the guy got his foot in bounds really good. Now, this is we had to sack and we got to get this cut. Reggie got to have him cut off on the crossing route. He lost track of him. The guy got underneath of him and gave him a place to throw it. And we got a sack. And then they ran a little quarterback read zone play. And, have the shot there and they get it in and, and then score a touchdown, unfortunately, and they get that first drive and you know, get it right down. Now, we did a great job surge here, got black and, and knocked the guard back in so when the kick hit, the, hit their own guard top in the helmet and, and we blocked it. Now, watch this return by Kermit. Great job here by Shane Brox. He's doing a real nice job. Carlos in the game right there. Nice job by Legway. And I'm going to tell you, Kermit Whitfield is phenomenal on these returns and we're going to start seeing him a bunch. We just had to give him a couple games to get the feel of things, but and he had a nice catch in the ball game too. Here, nice play action by Jake. Finds a nice over out to Kenny Shaw. Nice throw and catch and uh, get a big gain. And, you know, Jake, when he's come in, has done a really nice job throwing and catching. I mean, uh, excuse me, throwing the football. Nice zone player by Carlos here. Boy, he hits that thing hard. Nice lead block by Giorgio Newberry and our lineman up inside. And very proud of the way Carlos is playing. Here he is. Now we run that double lead again. Back up inside. And um, behind Kobe and the guys, and we get it up inside and score very quickly. And Carlos is, is having a great game. Jake did a nice job of taking these guys in, leading us down the field for a touchdown. He's just explosive. Yeah, so nice. See, there's 41, lead blocking on linebacker again. Mm -hmm. Great job by him. Oh, there's Matthew Thomas. There you go. Tell you what, now he had a very nice ball game. So he plays great in space. Those loose down plays, he's going to be one heck of a football player now. Really developing. Chris Casher playing the quarterback and squeezing it. Jacoby holding it down inside. Nate Andrews in the ball game did a nice job. Very proud of those guys. I right, just Matthew again gets a second sack. That's very that's big time right there, Matthew, coming off that edge. Playing really good football. Again, there, there's Love Lady in the game. Carlos again on another stretch play, gets the ball outside. There's uh, Jesus Wilson out there blocking really well. It's going to be a really nice play. We get a nice play action. We get Kermit on low over route. Getting him back in here. Kermit makes a night. Now watch this move after he gets the ball. Boom, boom, boom. 
And, he, and the thing I love about it, he's not make, he's not losing ground while he's doing it. He's making he's going forward as he makes you miss. And great play by Kermit. And did a real nice job. There is Carlos leading us up inside to power. And good job to Jonathan Wallace in the game. You got Austin Barron who's back from injury. Great job, Jake Farron crew back in the ball game right there. Great to see him and uh, and Trey Jackson Trey, is back at the start. Well, Trey, Trey got back yeah. at the beginning, but Reuben Carter playing. And when he went in with the twos, I'm gonna tell you what, Reuben Carter's playing really good football right now, folks. I mean, you look at that film; he actually didn't miss a beat. Great job there, Desmond Holland. Good to see him in the ball game doing a good job there. Reggie Northup again, Jacoby. There's Gerald Demps. And we get a little stretch play here. Get a little outside. Watch this block by Carlos. He's learning that blocking out there too. Got it on the edge. Giorgio Nana, nice, nice Green block. Got a nice cut. Doing a real nice job getting guys out in space. Reuben, Reuben, Jonathan Wallace. And we get a nice throw. Trying to get it here, and they, they get us in man. Jake's trying to scramble. Got to keep the ball away. It's third down. They, they unfortunately they got us there. They covered us down in two man and, uh, and got the route. Nice punt by Kaysen. Hope he doesn't keep, keep, we keep keeping down from his work. Now, I thought the guy gave a fair catch here. He waved his hand. But it was a great job by Telvin going to get him. I'd fall down, too, if Telvin was coming to me. <laughs> he did a nice job. They tried to make a cut, but they weren't. I mean, nice job. Here's E.J. Levenberry in the game doing a nice job. There's uh, Mitchell doing a great job in the game. Uh, great to see him back and playing because he had a little knee. was banged up. Did a real nice job. There's Ronald Darby. Missed tackle. There's Chris Casher going to make the play. Uh, great job there. Derek Mitchell's really coming. There's Carlos on another run. Got out. Great job by Ferencrew. Almost nice run down the sideline. You know what's funny? There's 32 and 8 cheering him on down the sideline. Mm -hmm. Just being his biggest fan, doing a great job. Look who's right there celebrating with him. Talking about teammates now. Carlos Williams hitting it right up inside, doing a real nice job. Carlos Williams on the carry. Pounding that ball. Now here we go on defense. There's uh, Justin Shanks in the ball game. There's DJ Levenberry making a real nice play. Derek Mitchell again showing up. Uh, doing a real nice legway, getting his hands up, forcing the ball back down. Casher, Justin Shanks, all those guys getting the ball back. There's Colin Blake in the ball game, Lamarcus Brutus. Great to see all these guys playing. Good job on the edge, right? I can't see who made that play. Casher, it looks like he and Dimps. Nice job by Nick Waysom coming in, making a play. There's Derek Mitchell, Shanks. Again, Casher. Guy's got a lot of talent. People forget, he ain't been around long. He's going to be a good football player, folks. Real good football player. Nice job, Ryan Green. Right to run right here. Make guys miss. Gets five or six yards. And uh, uh, Golston in the game. Really, Rashad Golston doing a real nice job at receiver. Really it does a great job. It's a walk-on for us. It's really developed into a good football player. Again, nice good punt. Pin him back down there. Wish we got the first down. But, you know, got to be careful throwing the ball too much. And there's Desmond Holland on a nice play. Woodall in the game right there. Does a nice job. Burnett, all those guys. And it's great to see those guys. And, Coach does a great job, very complimentary, and it was great to see him. I think they got a great ball club. They'll have a chance those one AA playoffs, I think, and uh, he, he does a real nice job with those guys. 54-6 the final. Coach, I want to go back to two guys you singled out uh, or highlighted defensively, guys that got opportunities this week, uh, Chris Casher being one and Terrence Smith yes. being another. I mean, Smith had 12 tackles in his first career start. Chris Casher has not played a lot of football exactly. recently because of injury in high school and whatnot. Really nice to see those two guys shine. It really is, and, and like you say, I, I say it's going to be critical for the development of our team, how our young guys develop, and those guys keep playing when you feel comfortable in the game, and those guys are going to be making big-time plays and big-time situations, and very proud for those guys. I think they got great future here at Florida State. Let's take a look back to the big play of the second half presented by Xfinity. This is a third straight week, Coach, that the big play comes from the opening drive of the second half. Yes. And you're three for three and coming out and scoring, putting points on the board. So it's been a point of emphasis and it's showing out on the field. It's it, a big run by Devontae. It Freeman. really is. You can get to, like, we're scoring the last drive of the first half, first drive. So that's 10 or 14 points you get before anybody ever gets their hands on the ball. And big run, Devontae hit a nice 33-yard stretch play in there. And the line did a great job. Receivers blocking downfield. Just, we have a very unselfish football team. They don't care who gets it, just so we're having success. The last time uh, Devontae Freeman had a negative yardage rush was in the second quarter in the Orange Bowl. So, I mean, everything – he's it's he's awful. shifty back there. He I mean, really is. He's powerful. He's quick. He's fast. And, I mean, he's a lot stronger than you think he is. I mean, he, he's a strong guy. Yeah, and the offensive line is doing a good job. It is good to see Austin Barron back out oh, there. Oh, tremendous. I know, did Trey get dinged again or is he okay? No, no Trey was fine. Trey and we was just fine. put Ruben in because Ruben's playing so well. And we wanted to keep, you know, didn't want to wear Trey out in that ankle. But he was fine. He's doing great. We're really developing some depth there. Love Lady and Jonathan Wallace and Farron Crew. Those guys were developing a lot of depth in the offensive line. Yeah, so a lot of good things come out of the 3-0 and start for Florida State. But uh, the conference comes calling again yes. and uh, actually comes calling for the next several weeks in a row. Uh, a big trip coming up to Boston College. We'll talk about the Eagles uh, in just a little bit. So stay with us. Florida State back in the ACC. A 3.30 kick against the BC Eagles in Chestnut Hill is coming up this Saturday. We'll preview that matchup in just a little bit right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show.
Let's go behind the scenes of Seminole football with this week's Seminole Insider, presented by Hyundai. The decision we made who we were going to be was made a long time ago, guys. Like we said, we made that decision a long time ago. You decided you wanted to be different. You decided you wanted to be elite. That was the standard. It's time to play. From the first play to the last. You know what you've done. You know the work you put in. You know what you're capable of doing. And you know how to do it. And you can do it. Now we just get to see the people outside this room how we've been doing it. That's what we get to do tonight. This is what Today we're joined by linebacker coach and special teams coordinator Charles Kelly. And coach, first of all, welcome to Tallahassee. A little bit different than Atlanta, Georgia, where you came from. Talk about how the transition has been to moving to Tallahassee so far. It's been great. Uh, my family and I were very excited to have the opportunity to come here. Uh, you know, the community's been wonderful. Uh, my, my kids love the school here, uh, and, and they've become huge Seminole fans. So. The community's embraced us, and it's been a good transition. Talk about just your background. Where are you originally from, and how did you b get introduced to the game of football? Well, I, I'm originally uh, from South Alabama. I grew up not too far from here, about two hours away. Um, Ozark, Alabama is my hometown. A lot of people might realize that uh, that's where Mickey Andrews is from. Um, so uh, that's an honor for me to be able to say that, you know, the tradition and uh, legacy that he left here at Florida State. But uh, I, I actually the first major college football game that I saw as a, as a young kid was here at Florida State uh, back in the late 70s. And uh, so that was, you know, it was real exciting for me to have the opportunity to, to come here, you know, with the tradition that uh, they've had here in the past and just what Coach Fisher has been able to continue to build here. Uh, but Again, I'm from South Alabama. Um, I went to Auburn, played for Coach Dye at Auburn, so we actually had some uh, very good games against the Seminoles back then. Unfortunately for us at that time, we were never able to beat them, you know, while I was there. But uh, And then I got into high school coaching right after college, and then uh, ironic that uh, when Terry Bowden took the job at Auburn, uh, he gave me an opportunity to come there as a graduate assistant, and uh, that was my first experience in college. That's where I met Coach Fisher and Coach Trickett and some of the other guys. Uh, it, you know, in '93, we we're very fortunate to go undefeated at that time, and that's kind of how I got into college coaching. Uh, been very fortunate to work for some very good head coaches. Of course, I worked for Coach Bowden. I worked for Bill Burgess at Jacksonville State uh, after leaving Auburn. Uh, was I uh, had opportunity to work for uh, uh, Chan Gailey at Georgia Tech uh, and along with Paul Johnson. You know, both of those are very good coaches and, you know, I learned a lot of football from them, but had a wonderful opportunity to come here and be back with Coach Fisher and uh, I, I haven't been this excited in a long time. You've obviously been around not only the Fisher family, but the Bowden family as, right. as well too. A lot of Florida State roots, even from being from Mickey Andrews' hometown. How much of that was maybe a deciding factor that you wanted to come here, that you knew everything really about this place? You know, you, I had so much respect for Coach Bowden here as a coach, just being an outside, you know, playing against him a couple of times. When I, we were at Georgia Tech, uh, we played against him. In fact, one of the stories I remember, you know, it was a, it was a tight game up in Atlanta, and uh, they had a chance to win at the end of the game. We, we pulled it out, but... I can remember going home that night thinking, I can't believe that I was on the opposite sideline of Bobby Bowden. I mean, it was just for me, respecting the tradition and honor of college football, that, that was amazing to me. Um, you know, to, I will always have a, a O. Terry Bowden, um, the opera, you know, for him being able to give me the opportunity to get in college coaching, I will owe him that forever. Um, he didn't have to do that. I wouldn't be where I was at today if he hadn't given me that opportunity. So I'm very grateful for that. And then Coach Fisher, you just, you're around certain people in your career. 
and you see them and you know this guy's going to be, you know, this guy's got a chance to be very successful in this business. At a very young age, you could see that with Coach Fisher, just with his leadership skill, his competitiveness, uh, the way he was with people, and, and he's a good person. You know, when you combine all that, then you, you know somebody's going to be successful. And as a coach coming up, that's what you want to be around. You want to be around successful people. You learn from those, and, uh, and that helps you out as you grow in the business. And finally, this year, you get to have an effect on guys like a Telvin Smith, a Christian Jones, arguably maybe two of the greatest linebackers in college football. What's it been like transitioning to young men like that that are, that are equally as great off the field as they are on it? That's the, you know, the thing that I've been most impressed and about the whole team here at Florida State. Listen, I played against them last year in the ACC championship game, so I knew they were very talented. Um, you knew the way they handled themselves on the field with class. You knew that they were good people, but getting to know them as real people, that's, that's been amazing for me. Um, because you know, sooner or later, they're gonna have to hang up those cleats. And what they've learned here under Coach Fisher and all these coaches that have been here, I, I think says a lot for them as people. Um, I do believe this, when you have that talent, and you combine it with being a good person, and you work really hard at your craft, I think that's when, uh, you know, when your intangibles outweigh your talent, that's when good becomes great. And that's what, you know, that's what we've been trying to, to preach. Do everything right. You know, you've got God-given talent. Do everything right. Work hard at your craft and, and be as good as you can be. Well, Coach, it's been a pleasure having you inside of here in the studio. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Blanc along with Coach Fisher. And Coach, uh, a 3-0 and start, but uh, that's in the rearview mirror now. Now the goal is to try and get 4-0. And, and to do that, you've got to go into Boston College, a team that you've had success against of late, but uh, a new coaching staff. Yes. Uh, and, and, you know, a veteran quarterback, and you're on the road, and it's the ACC. Exactly right, and, and they've done a great job coaching. They're very different on defense. They carry a lot of problems, the three down packages, four down packages, different blitzes, different stunts, coverages up front. They're very, they'll get in green and two tights and run it and be physical with it. they got big, strong linemen, big, strong backs, but then they have some quarterback can throw it. they got a receiver or two can really go get it. So they cause you a lot of problems, and they're going to be well coached up in uh, – up in Boston, you know, so it's going to be a tough ball game. To explain, uh, you know, from a from a preparation standpoint, when a team is that multiple defensively, uh, I, I would imagine it creates a lot more need for attention to detail as your as your game plan and going through practice it, during the week. It does, and the amount of and the amount of reps you get on each thing become very limited yeah. because you have to hit everything, and then the different looks and times they do. So from that standpoint, it, it is a very tough preparation. Thing. A lot of guys have to, you know, things you have to do, you may only get one or two reps instead of four or five or six at them or seven of them during the week, and, you know, it, it makes it tough. New coaching uh, staff, new head coach. Now I know you have game tape because they've played a few games, but when you're facing a first-year coach, is that a little more difficult too? And I, mean, I know in the no offseason you're probably advanced scouting and all no that No doubt, thing. especially when they have an off week because you don't know how they react, different things they put in and what they're capable of doing. And, and uh, you know, till you get to know somebody, it, it's hard to go against. You're going to have, uh, hopefully, uh, Mario Edwards Jr. back out there. Yes. Though. We have him, Christian Jones, Eddie Goldman. Hopefully, I'll have those guys back out there ready to play. Yeah, you think about the fact those three guys didn't play last week it makes the yes. defense performance look even better. Yes, exactly. Well, it'll be uh, FSU and Boston College, 3:30 kickoff as the Knolls go back on the road. And still more ahead. We'll step aside and come back with some final thoughts here. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back. We're discussing a Texas favorite today, chicken fried steak. Dustin Hopkins is favorite. Any player from Texas loves chicken fried steak, but we've made it healthy as always. The big thing you're using here today is whole wheat flour. Correct. So we're making it a little lighter, adding, of course, some fiber. And then we're going to make the country gravy a little lighter as well. We're going to add some half and half rather than some cream to it. So we start off with some thinly pounded steaks. You can pound it as thin as you like. I know you said you like the steak to be paper thin. Some of the people like it to be a little thicker. So then we're just going to go ahead and dredge it in flour. 
And you can, if you don't like just whole wheat flour, you can add some all-purpose flour to it. Then you're just gonna shake it off. And then we're gonna go ahead and dip it in some half and half. And this is what helps the country fried steak happen. It's gonna add that thicker breading that reminds everybody of what their good old favorite is. This is one of those meals that can really be a heart attack waiting to happen if you, if you, if you do it the wrong way. But you doing it with this, I mean, like almost like we did with Thienish until a couple weeks ago, it was, you know, you add the extra layer of, almost an extra layer of flavor and it's still just as healthy. Yeah. So I already have some oil and hot in my pan and we don't eat, deep fry this in a fryer. You always could, but we're trying to keep it a little lighter. So we just have a thin layer of oil and then we're going to go ahead and add each one of our steaks in. And they take about two to three minutes on each side to be cooked through. So we're just going to let these go, and then once they're all done, um, we're going to go ahead and plate it up, and I'll show you how to make our country gravy. Oh, that sounds great. Okay, so once they're browned on both sides, we're going to go ahead and take them out of our pan, and we're going to set them on our plate so they can be coated with our gravy. Then we're going to go ahead and add to the oil some of our whole wheat flour. Get that nice roux. Sorry. Right. So you're just going to mix it until the flour and the oil come together and look like a wet sand. And then you're going to cook it for a few minutes until the flour taste has cooked out. And now we're going to add our half and half. When we add our half and half, it cuts the calories and adds a good amount of flavor. Yeah, the good old southern way to do it is just good old fashioned cream and that, that can load that, that gravy up. Right. And by using less oil and doing this in our pan, we're going to get all the little bits from the steak to add a good amount of flavor without having to add any more fat. So we're just going to whisk this together and when it's finished it's going to come nice and brown country gravy looking and then we're going to just go ahead and pour a little bit over our steaks. And I know you can't wait to try this. Oh one. man, you are not kidding. Okay, why don't you dig in and tell me what you think. So really using that using the wheat really takes down. I mean, you would say almost, I don't want to say half the calories, but you're really saving a lot by using that. Yeah, and by not putting it in a deep fryer and just doing it with a little bit of oil in your pan, it's really going to help you save calories there too. Dustin, this is for you, buddy. I know this is this is his favorite. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That was outstanding. The the texture of the gravy itself is actually heavier. So you're yeah. almost getting more almost more bang for your buck than that one. Yeah. It's still tender, still still great, it still tastes great, it's nutritious, you're saving stuff, that's always a win-win situation for everybody. Make sure you come back next week, and as always, if you want this recipe or any other great recipes that Chef Joyce has come up with, go ahead and visit Seminoles.com right now. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Florida State 3-0 as they go on the road to Boston College this week. Coach, so you're a quarter of the way through the, uh, the regular season. Uh, what have you learned about your football team thus far? Well, I think we've been on the road, we've been at home, we've been behind. We've been ahead. So from those standpoints, how you handle those situations, but also that we still have a lot of improvement to do. I still think there's a lot of growth in this team, and, and that's a good thing because, you know, you're still playing well, you're doing some really good things, but you can still play better, and that's what you hope for, that you're not, you haven't capped out, you know, and, and there's definitely a lot of room for improvement in all three phases with us. And But I like our team. I like the, I like the family atmosphere they create. I like the competitive they, they compete with every day, and I just like going to practice with them every day. Fans and media, we're stat driven, so we pay attention to the guys who put up the numbers. But the guys who, uh, uh, you know, that, that we're not following in the same way, offensive linemen, even even a Nick O'Leary who didn't necessarily have big catches, I yes. mean, they really played well this week. They were exceptional. They controlled the line scrimmage, run the stretch plays, our power plays inside, our gap, our zone plays. I thought, I thought the all offensive line tight ends. Chad Abrams did a tremendous job, I thought. And we blocked well downfield, so there's a lot of things going on that you don't always see that are allowing us to do the things we, we need to do on offense and defense. Very proud of some of those big defensive linemen are keeping those holes shut up front. It takes a special mentality to sign up and say, I want to be a fullback, because that is not a glory position. That, that's a you feel sore the next day position. Even 10 years ago, it was better than it is today. I mean, there's going to be less and less of them, but, you know, I think they're very critical for success. And the way Chad's playing for it, I mean, I, I love everything. And special teams, he's just a tremendous competitor for us and, and a very big part of our football team. Jameis Winston through three games, Coach, continues to progress and grow. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, sort of assess where he is in the development process three games in. Very happy. Uh, I think he's staying true to his process. I think he's preparing well. Uh, I think, you know, sometimes we've got to be careful not try to make all the big plays. But, you know, it's, it's you'd rather say, well, than giddy up. But I think he's doing a great job of managing the game. I think he's doing a good job of managing the team and understanding situations and a very good leader, natural leader, and I think he's uh, making good decisions with that football. 
Another guy whose name we didn't mention, uh, sort of like offensive line, it means he's doing well, and that's Roberto Aguayo. Yeah, I mean, Roberto just he makes all his field goals and kicks off very well and puts the ball where it's got to be, and I'm very pleased with his development right now. Yeah, he's the second leading uh, kick scorer in the country right now between, wow. behind uh, Maryland's kicker. So Florida State off to a good start. Coach, uh, the keys this week as you uh, go into practice uh, to have a good work week uh, getting ready for Boston I mean, College. I understand the importance of going on the road, how tough it is. It's a conference game. They've had an off week. They're going to be shooting for you again. You're going to get everybody's A game. And, again, the power preparation. I mean, the discipline of preparation, I think that's the key. And, and we have to be able to do that and keep a great attitude and work ethic and have a great passion to be successful. Well, Coach, uh, have a good week uh, at the office, so to speak. And we'll see you in Chestnut Hill. And we'll see you next week right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Thanks for joining us. The Jimbo Fisher Show has been brought to you by the Florida Lottery, proud sponsor of FSU Athletics, the Florida Department of Transportation, drive sober or get pulled over, the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas, Camping World and Good Sam, your one-stop shop for everything RV, Coca-Cola Zero, real Coke taste and zero calories, the Gem Collection, finest quality jewelry, extraordinary service, and the best possible prices. SunTrust, it's never been easier to switch to SunTrust. Visit suntrust.com slash switch. Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe. Join us next week for another in-depth look at Florida State football.